We're very happy to be joined by two-time North Melbourne Best and Fairest, Sean Higgins, of All-Australian 2018, and, and I hold would have been back-to-back -back if not for a shoulder injury a year ago. Uh, Sean, we know teams all have peaks and valleys. Kangas are in a bit of a valley now. Is it easier or harder to endure, to endure a rough run of form when you're in a hub? Well, the interesting part on that, Phil, and thanks for having me on uh, today, is that in some ways it, it can be easier as long as the energy and the camaraderie within the boys is up because we're 24-7 living together at the moment in unusual circumstances. So not getting the result that we would like on the field at the moment. But the good thing is we've got plenty of time to spend together uh, with our coaches as well and really knuckle out the way that we want to go about the way we're playing and our game plan and areas that we can improve. And as you mentioned, we're currently living in a hub at the moment. So we've got great access to recovery techniques, to training and to our coaches to make sure our game's in good shape. So that's the positive about being in the hub. But I think it comes back to making sure that the vibes up and the positivities up around the playing group just to make sure that people are still enjoying their time here while difficult times in the two hours of playing at the moment for us that we're not getting the result. Um, but like you said, in the hub and hopefully we can do something about it. Well, and like you said, in the last match against the Bombers, you were ahead at quarter time, you won the inside 50s. It, it, it seems on paper things were going well. What for you is the, the key ingredient to take favorable statistics and turn those into favorable results? Yeah, so there was a lot of parts of the game that were pleasing for us in the way that we went about it. We obviously defended relatively well. Um, we were going well in and around the contest and the clearance work from stoppages were good. We let ourselves down in the way that we moved the football going inside forward 50. And, and as you mentioned, we were getting good looks when we were going forward, but we just weren't converting on the scoreboard. So there's positives in that because we're getting our hands on the football. Uh, we're getting it in the front half of the ground for us. The next step for us is adding a layer to be able to convert those inside 50s into scores. And you've been missing some of your colleagues on the field itself, Jack Zebel, Jed Anderson, a two-time best and fairest like you, Ben Cunnington. How do you overcome that many absences? Yeah, well, we've got some great young guys that are taking really promising steps going forward. But clearly when you've got senior guys out, including Jack, who's our captain, Ben, who uh, won the best and fairest last year. So there's voids there that we need to be filled. There'll be a couple of players come back this year, uh, sorry, this week for the, the upcoming game that hopefully gives us a spark and can generate some, some better ball movement and goals on the scoreboard. But we just got to encourage you those that. younger guys that are taking those, the opportunities that um, they can develop as well and, and get those senior guys back as quickly as possible. You mentioned the upcoming match. It's against the reigning premiers, Richmond. Uh, Higo, if we were to, to see your cell phone, maybe, the game notes you had, if it were to accidentally be published to the masses, what would those game notes say? Well, it'd be, it'd be pretty simple, to be honest, because we know that the way Richmond want to go about it, you've, you've mentioned last year, but they've been a quality side down for, for three years. They've won a couple of premierships in those three years. They're an attacking fast forward moving team um, we've got to make sure defensively we're set up really sound we go to work around the ball which we have been doing but the next layer for us is that we need to convert our inside 50s into scoring opportunities uh, and looking after the football and giving our forwards a really good look when we're transitioning the football into our forward half uh, it sounds easy uh, on theory and, and on paper but hopefully we can do that this week well, in their last win over the Swans, it was, it was kind of an American football score, 34-26, and, and Dimma didn't hold back frustration with some of the Swanee's tactics. Your job is to frustrate the opposition. When you hear that the side is being frustrated with a fold-back approach, how much temptation is there to maybe, I, I don't know, heighten the amount of times you would do that in a match? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? The scores have been relatively lower this year as a whole. Clearly, as you would know, our game's been reduced in the game length because of the circumstances surrounding the COVID period. Um, and a lot of teams are finding it difficult to score compared to the way that they have been going about it in other years. And that game last weekend, as you mentioned, the Sydney-Richmond game was an example of that. Uh, we'll back it in the way that we want to go about it. We'll look at the way that Sydney went about it to nullify the scoreboard 
impact that Richmond were able to have. But we'll back our game plan in and the way that we want to play. And, and we're confident if we do that and we improve some areas, as we mentioned uh, prior, then we can give it a really good crack this weekend and, and challenge Richmond, who, who are one of the better teams in the competition. Here you go. Last question for me. You're from Geelong. You know how iconic the grand final is at the MCG. What are your thoughts about conversation regarding moving this event out of Victoria for the first time? Yeah, it's going to be a huge call. I mean, football in Australia is huge, but football in the in the heartland of AFL territory is Melbourne and has for, forever been at the home of football, the MCG. And clearly there's contractual obligations there that are in place but also on the flip side, the importance of having a crowd and what that generates for the game that maybe we, we the discussion needs to be had and we can look at potentially what's best for the game over the next couple of months. The interesting thing is it's forever changing here so quickly. One day it's different to the next, but um, in some areas around our country, we're able to have 30,000 people and half fill a stadium. Unfortunately, that's not the case in Melbourne at the moment. And all the teams that base themselves in Melbourne, along with the MCG, that's suitable for a grand final, um, isn't able to facilitate football at the moment. So that conversation is going to need to be had in the, in the upcoming months. Higo, delightful having a chat to you here on SportsCenter. Thanks so much and all the best for you and the Kangas going forward. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, Phil.